Hello, my name is Steve Scheel and I'm Product Manager at HVR Software. I will now demonstrate how to set up HVR real-time data integration, and that's to replicate an Oracle database to a SQL Server database. The SQL Server database here is on a different machine, and it can be used for reporting or for data warehousing. HVR here is a pipeline. It will capture each change from Oracle on the left and apply those changes to SQL Server. On Oracle, HVR is using log-based capture so that changes are read straight from the Oracle redo files and archive files. This means HVR isn't using any database triggers and it isn't using the Oracle log miner either. Avoiding those means that HVR has no performance overhead. Changes are then piped across to SQL Server, and they're applied to the SQL Server database within one second. HVR uses SQL Server's native API, so it doesn't rely on any gateways like JDBC or ODBC. Likewise, they handle special data types badly, so HVR is handling the data more accurately, and it's also benefiting from the maximum speed of SQL Server. Before installing HVR on Windows, there are a few prerequisites. These are all described in the installation section of the HVR manual. One requirement is permissions. HVR must have permission to log on as a Windows service. And another is that Perl must be installed on the Windows machine. I've already installed Strawberry Perl for this demo. A trial for HVR starts normally with an email from HVR software. This email will contain few things. One thing, it contains a license file. It also contains a URL to access the HVR download site. So I'll now click on that URL and start downloading HVR. We go to the Windows version. And now in the wizard, I'll just choose the default options. Okay, the wizard is now finished. I'm now going to go back to the email and I'm going to install the HVR license file which was attached. To install this, all you do is save the file to the lib folder in the HVR home directory. So simply save the file. The installation of HVR on the Windows machine is now complete. The replication will be from an Oracle database on a different Linux machine to a SQL Server database on this Windows machine. So HVR must be installed on both machines. I'm going to install HVR on Linux now. The steps for Linux are shown in the install section of the HVR manual. Basically, there are just two steps. First, download HVR for Linux from the HVR website and unpack the compressed tar file. The second step is to set up the Linux iNet daemon so that it listens for HVR connections. This is an iNet D configuration file for HVR. I'm now going to enroll it into the Linux iNet daemon. In SQL Server, we need to create a new database which will become a target. Uh, the Oracle database which we'll be replicating from is called Osiris, so we'll call this new target database Osiris DB. HVR needs a private database for its configuration information too, so I'll create that now. This is called the HVR Hub Database. An extra HVR installation step is needed here. We need to register a DLL for the HVR scheduler. Um, this step is also shown in the um, HVR manual. We're now going to start the HVR GUI to actually configure HVR. First of all, register to the hub database, which we just created. First of all, we need to add in a location, which is a So database. this is the source database. I'm now going to create the SQL Server target database. Now create the replication channel. Called Osiris. The channel contains two things the groups of databases involved. I'll create a capture group containing only the Oracle database. 
and also a target group containing the SQL Server database. It also contains actions. Now, HVI actions they define what functionality HVI should do on each on each database. So, on the capture database, we're going to be capturing changes. I'm going to use log-based replication, although there are lots more options available. And on the target database, I'm going to use this database integrate action to apply changes to this database. And I'm only going to use an error handling option. Now I'm going to add tables to this channel. I'm going to click through to the OSIRIS database, and choose tables out of it. Um, this is a big database, but just as a demo, I'm going to choose just four tables, add them in. Now I've created the channel. I've now set up replication, but the next step is to actually load the replicated tables into the empty target database. So HVR has got the refresh option to do that. I'm going to replicating from the Oracle side to the SQL Server side. I'm going to refresh the data across, but I'm also going to create tables in the SQL Server database, which don't exist yet. Do the refresh. This tells me the state of the progress of the of the refresh. This refresh has succeeded quite quickly, but it's quite small tables. And now I'm going to do an HVR load. HVR load actually initializes replication. So from the moment I do HVR load, all the changes made in the source database become captured, and HVR, when it starts replicating, will actually pick up changes from that moment. That says a replication is now ready to, ready to start being scheduled. I'm now going to show database changes being replicated. First, I'll open the Oracle source database and make a change to a table. This is the land table, and the entry for Luxembourg is spelt wrongly. I make that change and commit it. Changes are being captured, but replication hasn't actually started yet. So if I do a compare between the, the source database and the target database, I can actually see the difference. I'm going to do a row-wise compare, so I can see the difference as an SQL statement. Tables are different by one update. This is the SQL showing the difference. I'm now going to start replication. First of all, start the replication service. And now I'm going to trigger the replication jobs. Replication is now happening. If I do a compare between the two databases, again, this time, this time you can see all the tables are identical. Finally, I'm going to go into SQL Server and look at the table in the target database. You can see the change has been integrated through from Oracle to SQL Server. That's the end of this demo. During this demo, I've downloaded HVR. I've installed replication from an Oracle database on Linux to a SQL Server database on Windows. What you see is that HVR is easy to use and it's very fast and efficient. HVR has lots of other possibilities, but this demo has just been about plain replication. In other demos, I'll be showing more advanced features. If you would like more information about HVR, or if you want to test HVR yourself, please visit our website, www.hvr-software.com. Thank you for watching.